Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. So apparently She-Hulk wants to smash and <laughs> we'll get into that. But today we're drinking good old Bush Light because, well, you can't drink the fancy beers all the time and I don't want to waste all my fancy beers on a video like this. My goodness Lord. But anyway, let's get into this video. Oh man, I am so just not... I don't know if I like this. Ugh. If you've got Tinder, you might match with She-Hulk from Gizmodo. Oh my god. What level of cringe has the Marvel Universe gotten to to where this is what they consider to be meta? It's not just like the they had the characters on Twitter like going back and forth, you know, having conversations that people could see. It wasn't something like that. It's She-Hulk wants to smash. And you could smash She-Hulk for the low, low price of your soul. Anyway, throughout the many trailers and promos for Marvel's She-Hulk, two things have been made clear. Jennifer Waltz, uh, Tatiana Maslany, is a lawyer suddenly tasked with handling superhuman-related cases, and she's not uh, terribly good at having a dating life. San Diego Comic-Con say the attorney at law open a hotline for those in need, and now she's got herself uh her very own on her very own tinder profile so a fictional character for the purposes of promotion put up a profile on tinder which if i'm not mistaken most of the people that i know that use tinder are looking for one thing and one thing only and the family friendly disney company felt that that was a good way to promote this uh, whatever this is. Oh my god. I uh, uh. Oh, I wish I drank hard alcohol for this one. This this one this one gets me under the skin in more than one way. If you've got Tinder, then there's a chance that her profile may pop up in your list of potential partners. Lest you get too excited at thinking there'd be someone to DM, the profile would just straight up tell you this is an ad for the show, complete with uh stock images of Jen that you've seen in the months up to the release. And should you match, you can't really respond to them. It's a shame uh, that the bit is only surface level and the profile isn't used to convey any personality for Jen. But it's still a clever way to draw eyes onto the show. Okay, so at least they didn't go so far as to having like fake conversations with She-Hulk. Because, again, they, the I have a major problem, and I've talked about this in the Lord of the Rings uh, video that I just did. I have a major issue with uh, companies and corporations acting like people. Like, it's like why, <clears throat> what really bothers me about all these Twitter profiles that are corporations acting like people. It's like, yeah, everybody loves to laugh at, like, what the Wendy's profile does. But people interact with them as if they're a purpose or as they're is if they're a person and the purpose the purpose of those profiles my god i'm tongue tied is to get people to think about corporations and companies like people and to get people to build some weird meta connection with them I, I, I have issues with this. Romance in superhero comics can be weird at best on an average day. No, completely false romance as long as it's written correctly can be perfectly valid on any day it doesn't what do you mean romance and comics is can be weird that's spoken by somebody who's never followed a comic book relationship ever in the history of ever these are people who don't know what the hell they're writing and it's part of the reason why people are very excited for eric july's uh ripperverse Oh my god. <clears throat> and that's just for the heavy hitter couples that have persisted for decades. No, it's not. These people have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, this isn't even counting whatever the hell is going on with X-Men <clears throat> on in the X-Men's neck of the woods. You mean where they're turning every character bisexual or gay that have been straight for decades and just shoehorning it in instead of having, you know, original gay characters that could have blossoming relationships with new people like... Yeah, it's weird what's going on in X-Men because it's never been fucking done before and you guys are absolutely eviscerating the characters. 
In 2017's Mighty Captain Marvel number nine. Oh, God. Yeah, the one that, yeah, Captain Marvel, the one that they've had to reboot and redo, what, 17, 18, 19, 45 times? Okay. Marvel briefly touched on the idea of superheroes trying to have a romantic life via the dating app Cloak and Dater. Oh, God. Several of the big... See, and this is why they failed. This is why people started bowing out. I, I thought I was going to be able to read through this, and I, I, I don't think I can. Because this stuff just irritates me. It's that This is f like the bottom of the barrel type of of marketing and that's what this whole thing here is is marketing this isn't even like an objective news article at all it's all just marketing for next product and i can't stand it sorry the transition there it's all marketing for the next product and i i genuinely don't understand well i do understand it but i I thought these guys would have lost a lot more money before they started doing stuff like this. And now what they're doing is they're they're trying this whole meta thing. But the problem is, is that, you know, meta was kind of cute and cheeky like a few years ago. Um, but now that I, I'm starting to see more and more that people can't disassociate reality from fiction anymore. I have egregious issues with marketing like this. This is not like if it was just an ad that popped up on Tinder, that's one thing, an ad that looks like a Tinder profile. It's not. It's an actual Tinder profile that people are going to try to interact with. And those people out there who I, I, I who, who can't disassociate reality from fiction are going to get drawn into shit like this. Oh, well, she's likable. She's like me. She has a Tinder profile. She has. No, she doesn't. It's a fucking ad for a television show. But people will not get that people and and sadly there aren't enough people for them to support this business model at all obviously most people can disassociate reality from fiction but there is a larger portion of the population who can't larger than i thought that couldn't and it's crap like this where it's like oh you can match with she hulk and i'm like on tinder really on tinder you can match with she hulk on the website that is literally based around hookup culture that's your marketing tactic for the family-friendly Disney Corporation. I don't understand why Disney thinks this is a good idea. Obviously, they have investors. Obvious, But I guess they keep making money, so their investors just don't care. No matter how many times you hear, oh, Disney investors are mad at them. Oh, you know, this quarter wasn't that good. And and like, and like and I and I follow actually a channel that that's, it, it does... Fantastic Disney work, uh, which Clownfish TV. I love them. I think they're great. God, if I ever got to talk with them or meet them, that like the f hashtag YouTuber goals, right? And and they cover a lot of what's going on with Disney internally and externally. And it doesn't seem like what's going on internally, like they're slowing down at all. Thinking that this is a good idea is tantamount to disrespecting everything that came before it. And obviously they've already been doing it, so they don't care. But again, it goes back to the idea that can we please keep fiction out of reality? Like Tinder is obviously a place that's very real for a lot of people. And I don't seem to get why we can't just keep the two separate anymore. We have to have these characters function in the real world and deal with your problems. This is a superhero movie. This isn't Friends. We're not looking at a show like Friends or a show like Will and Grace or... You know, Frasier, I loved Frasier. Like, I don't know a lot of people that love Frasier. Loved Frasier, Kelsey Grammer, fantastic. Uh, oh my God, I still watch Frasier to this day. Actually, my wife and I, we just watched it uh, like six months ago. Like, Frasier is incredible. But it's not just a show. It's not, uh, 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 it's not a nightly sitcom. Like, this is supposed to be a superhero show using superhero things. And I think the problem is, is Disney like wants to tell a sitcom. But the problem is, is that they think everybody is still so interested in superheroes, which is objectively becoming less and less the case anymore, especially when you see things like Top Gun Maverick stealing the freaking show. I mean, that, I, that, that, that movie has legs in a way that I didn't know that that movie was going to have legs. I thought it was just going to be some knockoff crap. I was wrong. But if they want to do a rom-com, why not just do a Disney original, uh, or uh, not rom-com, uh, sitcom. Sorry, sitcom, rom-com. But why don't they just do a sitcom? 
leave the Marvel characters out of this because all they're doing is decimating more and more and more of the characters that we used to love. This is part of the reason I bailed on Marvel. Like, once Endgame was done, I was out. I was done. I've seen one... Uh, I, 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 I took two, two Marvel movies. I saw Into the Spider-Verse because my son and I, we had some guy time. We went out for a nice barbecue dinner. I took him to one of the best barbecue joints in Colorado when we lived there. And then we went and... You know, we watched uh, uh, Into the Spider-Verse. And then the other one is I took my whole family to see, um, what was it, uh, Far From Home? Whatever the newest one was where they brought Tobey Maguire back, the Spider-Man. Well, again, Spider-Man, though, right? And those are the only two that I've seen since Endgame because the rest of it is just, they're changing too much. They're destroying it. And I won't let my kids be exposed to the characters that they're putting on screen. And that goes back to the family-friendly aspect of this. Because if my kids come up and say, Mommy, Daddy, do you know that She-Hulk has a Tinder? I'm going to be like, where in the hell did you find out about that? And the problem is, is I'm like, we don't super shelter our kids. We monitor everything that they watch, but we can't monitor everything they watch, if you know what I mean. Like, we're parents. Every parent has that, like, has those things, has those struggles. We do our best, but this is not something that I want them to deal with. Well, she has trouble finding a date, and so she has to make a Tinder account because... No, that's not what She-Hulk is. That's not what superheroes are supposed to be. If you want to tell a story about a superhero, put it... Or, or about a, 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 a an attorney who's having trouble with, you know, her sex life or whatever, make a freaking sitcom stop doing this to our beloved superhero characters. And you know what? Honestly, I'm glad I checked out of that. And I'm glad once I get my Ripaverse comic, I'm going to be so fucking busy doing Ripaverse content that I'm probably not going to have enough time for the rest of my life. Hopefully I have enough time to go to work because <laughs> I need to go to work to pay the bills. But I also want to grow this channel. So, you know, there's that. But yeah, I just, this one just got to me. Usually I don't like covering Marvel stuff. I think it's hot trash. I think it's hot garbage. And I don't like doing like the rage bait stuff. I like being more positive on the channel as much as I can be or having a more eloquent point to the things that I'm thinking of. But this one just got to me. It just really, really, whatever. With that being said, thank you all for checking out A Drink With Crazy. I'm sorry I'm just frustrated in this video. However, I would like to ask you all a question. I don't have a community tab yet, but I would like to ask a question. I've been looking at the YouTube analytics lately, and it says that most of you guys are checking out our videos basically between like 8 a.m. in the morning and like 11 p.m. at night. And I was wondering, what time slot would catch your attention most? If I posted it at 8 a.m., would that catch your time slot? If I posted it at, you know... Uh, around 2 p.m., would that catch it? If I post it around the 8 p.m., like I've been doing, well, 6 to 8 p.m., just depending on when I can get it all done, is that the most likely to catch your attention? I want you guys to let me know in the comments below what time slot is going to catch your attention the most because, well, I kind of want people to see this stuff, I guess. <laughs> like, that's really fun. It's really cool to have more people engaging in the conversation. And with all of that being said, thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you next time right here on A Drink With Crazy. Cheers, everyone. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.